whole thing is one theme, many variations? I didn't think three is many, so when we get to the one theme, you'll see four. That, that is me. Um, I, if I'm big on branding, so I thought I should show a logo. A year ago, we, we gathered here to talk about web type and how 15 years with five type minis is type families was too many years and too few type families, especially when you were in your 30s, as I was when the internet was born. So we went through all the ways to get web type, all the ways to use it, and uh, it was basically a laundry list. And so now I've, it's a year later, I've settled on some things. Um, I'm not going to say these are best practices, these are my practices. Um, I occasionally use a hosted service uh, when I do its type kit. I pay 50 bucks a year and it gets me way more traffic than I ever get. When I buy type and I'm having to, which I like because I like the control, I buy it from two places. My fonts, which has a lot of choice and is sort of my, uh, you know, high, higher priced provider because they get stuff from the good foundries, the good foundries fast. And uh, I spend a lot of time on font spring, and I have the complaints from my husband to prove it. I don't buy shoes; I buy type. <laughs> Free, free is good, because uh, it doesn't show up on the bills. Um, font Squirrel, of course, and Google Fonts. I noticed that a lot of times the new stuff from Font Squirrel is in fact the new stuff on Google Fonts. Um, I think that has to do with the fact that the people who are developing web type and new type have figured out that they can get paid for it. Um, so people who are developing and who are generous are going to Google Fonts first. They're, get, they're also getting a, you know, visibility. Then they go to small foundries. They're getting paid. Uh, Font Squirrel, for their part, has, if you understand John in here, the financial term flight to quality, um, which means that you're going to spend money on things that are good. Um, and Font Squirrel sources are doing that, so the two are conversion. Shut up, Mary. Um, there is a caveat with Google Fonts. The easiest way to use them, of course, is to do what they say and have Google serve them as a hosted server. But every now and then a late version, every now and then means I had it happen once. Um, that one didn't get it. <coughs> you guys don't think that's funny. <laughs> um, but I assume I'm like not the only person. Uh, there was a time I, last year when I was using Google Fonts uh, that were getting served and a version of Chrome for the Mac uh, started serving things that look like keyboards. So now I download Google Fonts and uh, I do make at font face kits out of them so that way I know if a browser is going to barf on it it's because of something I did not something that's out of my control and uh, I'm funny that way uh, if something's going to barf I want it to be my fault so anyway free we have some duplication on the slides free type from font squirrel and google fonts and font generators and I'll show you what these and then the font generators, I go to two places, Font Squirrel has one, and I just discovered the other day, on my drive to Jerseyville, Illinois, there is an app called Font Prep that you can buy for $5 for the Mac, for the Mac, and keep it on your hard drive, and it will generate the appropriate uh, font formats for the web. If for some reason you don't want to upload your fonts to Font Squirrel and have it do you do it for you, and it will generate the CSS code. And I've also got a sample for you of the CSS code. Mary's font prep only for the Mac. Ah, uh, yes, and it's five dollars. Oh. 
So here is type kit. And I, this is what it looks like when you open up your kit generator. Um, and I've managed to hide the list of how, how their typeset, typefaces are listed so you can see what it looks like when it shows you how to list the type, how to use the fonts. You pick the ones you want and uh, it, and then it will generate the code for you. It generates JavaScript and like that. My fonts, that's what that looks like. FontSpring. I use FontSpring two ways. One is I keep a wish list of newly designed sites, of newly designed fonts. That's going to be on the next page. This is their supplier font site. I spend a lot of time. You remember all those typefaces we bought from Adobe in the day, back in the day, that were like 150 bucks. <laughs> FontSite has redrawn them and re-licensed them. Redrawn them in an open type format, re-licensed them for the web, and you can get anywhere from, you can get all the weights for anywhere from like $12 to $20. Um, so, since I like control, and they renamed them. So I'm slowly rebuilding my Adobe type collection courtesy of that. Um, and here's what News Gothic looks like, and you get all the weights in the world for $19. So I think that's a rather good investment, particularly since, you know, if we already have the desktop one for God knows what we paid back then. But also, I do keep, they do have your favorites, I do keep a wish list of the ones that Eventually, some nice client is going to pay like 200 bucks for the whole family or 300 something. I don't know about you, but almost no matter who the client is, don't you think anything over $50 a week is excessive? You know? I mean, I do anyway. And that is, oh, that's. The Google fonts list from last year. Again, I download the open type, generate my own font kit and the code. There's the font, there's the font squirrel generator, and here is a picture of font prep, which I learned about on the shoptalkshow.com podcast, which is what I listen to in the car driving through the countryside. And there is the code that font prep generates. I had three weights of crayon, which is a Google font. And this is the latest and greatest CSS syntax. And I believe we are posting our sites, our slides online. And uh, you can also email me. And I will send you this code in text as an example. Or spend five dollars for font prep and it'll generate all the code you want. This is for those times when you are not, you have some old font that's like public domain and you are sure it's legal to use on the web with your CSS, right? <laughs> um, and you have, and but you need all those font formats and, and you need somebody to ge generate the code because, frankly, I do enough typing, don't you guys? So generating all this other stuff just to make sure it's absolutely bulletproof. So that's what I'm using for, t so that was what I'm using for type. Now. Here's what I'm using the type for in 2012. In my life, I have standardized on Studio Press, which are the child themes of the Genesis framework, and another theme vendor that we're not talking about here, even though they're cheap and pretty, because they're not GPL, which is the WordCamp licensing schema of choice.